What's going on guys? Cassie from Jeepy Gear and Gadgets and welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new, we are putting a 5.3 LS into my two-door Jeep Wrangler. Now, the past few videos have been playing in the Dodge Charger, but I am back in the garage today because I have a lot to do. We're gonna be putting the engine back together. We have a lot of Jeep specific parts of the swap we're gonna go over. So I have my table full. Let's go ahead and go over everything and just dive right in. And, and there's a brand new 392 Hemi over here and I'm gonna show you how to put in a Jeep Gladiator. Not in this video. Video though. Wait, a Jeep Gladiator? This Jeep Gladiator. <laughs> Brand new 2020. This is the third video of this swap. In the first video, we tore down this junkyard engine and made sure it didn't need a sure it did, said it again. Made sure it didn't need a rebuild, which it didn't. In the second video, replaced the cam. We got a stage two low lift cam from Texas Speed. So that is done. And now in this video, we're gonna put everything back together and put on some fresh parts as well. So over here on the table, I've got quite a bit of goodies we have to get on today. I got a new head gasket or new head gaskets. We've got some ICT billet adapters, which is gonna come into play when we talk about the Jeep specific parts of this swap. We've also got some Sorry, you were going for the ARP head bolts. We've got some ARP head bolts. We've also got some other goodies from ICT Billet. We have some coil pack mounts and a coolant crossover. We have some new coil packs for max speeding rods. Now, everything I am using in this video, I'm gonna put in the video description below so you don't have to go searching for it. Now, before we can start putting everything back together, where well, there is an issue on the head we have to take a look at first because we gotta fix this before we can start putting the heads and everything back on. Now a common problem with used heads is the exhaust bolts breaking off. So the previous owner, when he was kind of taking everything apart, must have broken one of the bolts because over here, as you can see, this one is done. It kind of got cut off. It's not even flush. It's actually in there a little bit. So I need to take the head over to the bench because I got to weld this thing out. Now the best part about aluminum heads is that when we're welding with our MIG welder, we don't have to worry about the welds sticking to the aluminum. I'm gonna take this nut right here and put it right over top of the bolt and then just weld in circles and then just pull it out. Or at least I hope it goes that smooth. It might not, It'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> <Rawr>. <laughs> There she is, folks. Boom. Stubborn bolt. Now we can move on to putting the engine back together. Now we can get the heads on the engine. And it's at this part that you can kind of make your swap either a little more on the expensive side or on the budget friendly side. So a lot of people will take their heads to a machine shop so they can kind of, you know, work them over, mill them flat um, and clean them up a little bit. But because this engine is in pretty good shape, wouldn't you say Ben? Say and the heads are in shape. decent shape too? They look flat. They look flat. We are just <laughs> going to clean them up. So we're gonna make sure all of our mating surfaces are good, all cleaned up, and then put some new head gaskets on. I think we're gonna be okay. Are we gonna regret this moment? I don't know, maybe like, I don't think so. like a month after we finish the swap. We'll find out. We went with a nicer set of head gaskets. Uh, these are from AMS Racing. We originally had a cheaper set over there that we got from Amazon, but a lot of the comments from my first video said, hey, splurge and go on a nicer head gasket. So that is what we have done. We also splurged and got the ARP head bolts as well. So let's, you know, get to busting nuts and turning wrenches. Turning wrenches, hopefully, busting nuts. Hopefully we don't bust any of these nuts. Let's not do that. We don't want to bust at all. They both say front on the same side. You want to make sure that your coolant holes are there because if not, if I put this on the wrong side, yeah, they would be covered up. So front on the left here, coolant holes are open. Over here, it's still going to say front on it. Whoops, turn it upside down. It's still going to say front, but it's upside down. Everything lines up, and we have our coolant holes over here. So let's get let's get this rolling. Both heads are on, got the new head gaskets on. 
head bolts are torqued down. The head bolts come with instructions on like what to torque everything down to and what order. So I'm not gonna tell you exactly how to do that. Um, then stereo just started playing. Um, but what I am gonna start talking about is the Jeep specific parts of this swap. Now, bear with me, this is gonna get a little confusing, but I'm gonna do my best. Then speaker's still going. We are going to be keeping we are going to be keeping the factory dash that's in the Jeep right now. So in order to do that, we're going to be running two computers. We're going to be running the Jeep computer that is in there right now. And we're also going to be running a GM computer. So the Jeep computer is mainly gonna run the gauges and stuff like that, just so I can know like the oil temperature or the coolant temp wait, oil temperature, the oil pressure or the coolant temperature. And the GM computer is going to be running uh, mainly the engine. So they're gonna be doing different things. Now, in order to do that, we need sensors for both computers, right? Or maybe just one or the other. So that's where ICT Billet comes in. They have an adapter kit you can get. It's 40 bucks for the whole kit, which I went ahead and got, or you can just buy which adapters you need. So I know I'm gonna be using two of them and they're about 15 bucks a piece. So I went ahead and spent 40 just to have some extra adapters, adapters lying around the garage. Let's start with the, the coolant temp. Let's start with the coolant temp. On the GM engine, it has a coolant temp on one of the heads right here. It has a sensor and the GM computer needs the sensor to run the engine. Now, in order for my gauges to know what the coolant temp is, that's when I'm gonna have to use an ICT billet adapter. We're gonna be using the coolant adapter and there is a bolt on the other head, which I'm going to take out. It's like a blank bolt or a fill-in bolt. Not sure what the right term is. And twist it right in, put the bolt in. And now this adapter is going to connect to the sensor that reads on the Jeep computer. So we're gonna be able to plug in the Jeep computer sensor right there, and it's going to read to my gauges on the dash. So now my coolant temp is taken care of for both computers. We also need to use an adapter for the oil pressure gauge. So on the GM engine, the oil pressure sensor is right here on top. Now the engine doesn't actually need this sensor to run. So we are just going to take out the GM sensor and put in the adapter from IC Fillet. And now you can just plug in your Jeep sensor directly into this one, and it's going to read through your Jeep computer to your gauges. So now I have my coolant temp taken care of and my oil pressure gauge taken care of for both computers to be happy. I will go into detail about the computer situation in another video. That's a completely different topic, but wanted to cover it in this one because we were going to be doing some things that kind of affects both computers. Those are the only two sensors we need to worry about that are actually on the engine. Now for the speedometer, I'm gonna be keeping the transfer case that's in the Jeep right now and it has a little speedo gear in it, so we're good there. And then for the TAC or the tachometer, the RPMs, um, we're gonna either have to go with an emulator or go with an aftermarket style GM gauge. Not sure which one we're gonna go with yet, but I'll talk about that later on down the road. But back to the engine, we need to put the push rods and the rockers back in or reinstall them per se. Ben's grabbing a beer. We can already tell it's gonna be so much fun. It's, it's already like 10 30. <laughs> we, gotta, we, we gotta get to we it. We got a long way to go. are reinstalled, torqued down to spec. Now we need to put on our valve covers that are beautifully custom painted red by me with an awesome oil cap. But we also gotta put in some new gaskets, so let's get to that and get on to the fun stuff. It's like 11, have we eaten yet? Oh, it's past 12? No, that's oh. not. I haven't moved that back. Okay. Whew. We are so close, so let's get the intake on. Now, we got this intake off eBay, it was about 65 bucks. Kinda has like that fast intake type style. Don't know if it's gonna work or not, work or not but I will let you guys know. So let's get this thing torqued down so we can move on to the last steps. Gaskets are on already.
It's crazy that just a couple of months ago, this engine was a junkyard engine. It is starting to look so good. The engine is finally put back together. I'm getting even more excited about having a V8 in the Jeep. Now, one thing to mention is that I did put a new throttle body on here. It's just the factory style one. Um, I got it from maxspeedingrods.com, which is the same place I got the coil packs from. They have a lot of like factory style OEM parts. Uh, I would definitely go check them out. Sometimes their prices are better than Amazon. And if you use the code Jeep gear, it'll get you 15% more off. So if you're working on the LS swap or any other car project, hopefully that can help you out a little bit. But back to the engine, we have made this thing look so pretty. It is time to talk about the coil packs and the coil pack mounts. Um, guys, which one looks better? Let's the factory one? Let's check it out. Factory? After if you just did all this work, would you want to cover it up with those? Absolutely not. ICT Billet has some coil pack bracket mounts. They are beautiful aluminum, shiny, and I think they're going to look much better. They'll look a lot better. Let's oh see. yeah, that looks, yep, beautiful. They're definitely going to tie the look together, so let's get them on. Now, in my opinion, the engine is looking pretty good, and it's crazy that, you know, I've already said this, but a couple months ago, it did not look like this. Now, all in all, this looks like, in my mind, you know, like five, six thousand dollar engine right now, but um, as of right this moment, everything you see that I've done, I've only spent nineteen hundred dollars. Yeah. So, I think it was like nineteen hundred and two or something. Yep, so not even two thousand into this project yet. My goal is to keep it under five thousand. Um, so I think I can get right around 5,000, give or take a little bit, uh, but $5,000 for all of this, like to look like this, pretty good in my mind. For, for an LS swap, for a V8 swap, it's gonna be looking good. It's a budget friendly swap. I really hope like some of you guys out there that have been wanting to do an LS swap and just, you know, haven't like bit the bullet, you know that this can be done for a pretty like affordable price in my, in my mind. And I think to a lot of you guys too. You tired? I'm getting tired too. Can we just... Thumbs up. Thumbs the video. up. Thanks, guys. No. See you later. <laughs> we got a lot done in this video, guys. I mean, the engine is coming along nicely, and the engine portion of the swap is pretty much done now. I mean, I still need to do the spark plugs and the alternator and put the water pump on and all that stuff, but that will come. I think next it's going to be doing the fun stuff, which I think a lot of you guys want to see, which is going to be the transmission. We got to put a transfer case adapter on. We need to get the wiring harness on the radiator, the cooling system, like we have- All the swap specific stuff. Uh, yeah, for sure. So all of that is to come. However, the best part about doing like a swap on your own time is that you can do it as your budget comes along and you can literally build your V8 and drive your Jeep at the same time because you can do it step by step as you're ready. There are many more LS swap videos to come, but my next video is going to be an upgrade that every off-road user could use. Now, as always guys, give the off video- Off-road user. user. <laughs> off-road off addicts, any off-road driver. All right, that's it. Give the video a thumbs up guys, subscribe to the channel. And as always, my name's Cassie, keep Jeep and classy.